time. Time is running out in the land of Termina. Doom is approaching and so many of Termina's people need to be saved. However, we have the ability to manipulate time. We can repeat the same three days over and over to push further into our quest to save Termina and its inhabitants. But have you ever wondered how many cycles would it take to 100% Majora's Mask? How far can you push the game's limits? The rules for this challenge are simple, 100% the game. Absolutely no glitches can be used, and Song of Time must be used as sparingly as possible. But I'm also throwing a twist into this run. Last time we attempted to beat Majora's Mask in one three day cycle with the bare minimum. For this run we're attempting to cram all the necessary tasks into our first cycle again. But we're going to push its limits even farther than last time. Cafe and Andrew, Romani and the Ranch, the Gilded Sword, Gathering Masks, all of these are on the agenda. How much is possible in only one cycle? Let's find out. Right at the get go, we start preparing to get the wallet by farming the bushes in the opening section to hit 99 rupees and grab the Deku Nut chest further in. Now, officially in Clock Town, you can see just how fast the timer moves in the Deku cycle. Here's a comparison to what it looks like during the first main cycle. That's the three times clock speed kicking in. For this cycle, we're locked in Clock Town, so there's only a few things we can do. We can grab the stray fairy in the laundry pool and hand it in to get magic. We can deposit rupees until we obtain the adult wallet. We can complete all three days of Deku Playground for a piece of heart. We can play the Postman's Counter game to get another piece of heart. We can start the Bomber's Hide and Seek mini game to get the code to access the observatory and grab the Moon's Tear, which is used to get the land deed needed to reach the clock tower on day three. And of course, we can immediately give the deed away to the toilet hand to get a rather questionable piece of heart. To round off the Deku cycle, we grab one more piece of heart outside the clock tower and face off with Skulkid, who has a temper tantrum and has to be calmed down with bubbles. He drops a blue potato and we have our ocarina back, and Dream Zelda teaches us the Song of Time. Now you might be thinking, Smivik, why didn't you buy the bomb bag and bomb shoes? I have a good reason for this. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the One Cycle version 2. I want to see how much I can cram into our main cycle. So that effectively works as a one cycle run, i.e. the entire game, not 100%, but start to finish. Crammed into one main cycle so that it does everything our one cycle route did from the previous video, but also improves on it. So, as to not get any time advantage, I'll wait for the main cycle to grab the bomb bag and bomb juice. Day one of the first main cycle, let the madness begin. Starting off, we play the inverted song of time. For all the crazy stuff we're about to try, this song is vital to the plan. Inverted Song of Time extends our time from 54 minutes real time to 3 hours. After learning the Song of Healing, we can finally pull this Deku Mask off our face and be a real boy again. Now, it's go time. Kicking down the clock tower doors and storming towards the chest behind the shooting gallery, we have our Silver Rupee to buy our Bomb Bag and Bomb Shoes. Straight after we activate the Owl Statue in Clock Town, this will be vital. Now, last time I was using Young Link, to inefficiently shuffle around on his human feet. However, I had access to one of the best movement options already, Deku Link. Deku Link's backwalk speed is much quicker than Link's, so we can save some critical time. We back skip to the most important owl statue of the run, the Milk Road Owl Statue. This owl statue is needed for three tasks, one of which will be a run killer if failed, getting a Pona. Now if you didn't know, Epona is essential to reach Akana and Great Bay without glitches. But we'll have to get Epona's song which is taught by Romani, who is currently cut off by a giant boulder that can only be bypassed with a good old powder keg. And Romani will only teach you this song up until 5.59pm on the first day. If we miss this, we've wasted an entire cycle and any chance of a flex on my last video is out the window. We have 12 hours to tear up the land of Termina, gathering all the items required to reach her. Briefly, we need the Sonata of Awakening to get into Woodfall Temple to get our bow, to get to the mountain path leading to Snowhead Temple. Then, we need to get the Lens of Truth to see Damani in order to get the Goron Mask, learn the Goron Lullaby, and get into Snowhead Temple. Grab the Fire Arrows, melt the Ice Block in the Powder Keg Goron, and pass the Keg Test. All that, then we can blow up the boulder. But, the Owl Statue is important for other tasks. To 100% the game, we need to complete the Romani questline and the Cafe Andrew questline in this cycle. More on that later. Next, we heal the Witch in the Woods of Mystery. This opens up the boat tour and leads us to the Deku Palace. 
I'm not using the beans here, but for a good reason, which I'll explain later. A quick backflip onto this door frame into a front row allows us to grab the ledge and taking out the Deku Scrub gets us access to the Capture Monkey and Sonata of Awakening, our first dungeon song. So we book it to Woodfall, grabbing a song of soaring on the way. We're going to be putting that song to work in this run. Our plans for Woodfall Temple are simple. Get in, get the bow, book it straight to Snowhead. We can come back and finish the dungeon later. But we're on a serious time crunch right now. We have 8 hours to complete 2 tasks this time. Getting Epona and getting Cafe's Mask. After learning a harsh lesson last time, the moths were avoided this time. Alright, no pop by moth. Ooh, not this time moths. Not this time. And no death occurred. After striking down a Dynafoss, the bow is ours. Time to break the giant icicle blocking the path to Snowhead. And this time, with my bombs already obtained, we can progress through and blow up the snowballs ahead. We Deku backwalk it to the Mountain Village Owl statue and start the Goron Lullaby quest early. You can actually talk to this Goron to get inside the Goron Shrine as a human and talk to the baby to trigger learning this song faster. As you can now tell the Goron Elder his son has been crying. You need this knowledge first to learn the song. Heading back out we follow Kapora's feathers to the Lens of Truth. We can now see Darmani and heal him to get the Goron Mask. Before leaving, we grab the hot spring water and smash straight into the Goron Elder's icy prison to form out. And with that, we now have the lullaby intro, express-like. After playing the lullaby intro to the Goron baby, they bust out their music video moment and teach us the full Goron lullaby. All that is left to do is shred it up the spire and storm into the temple. Once again, our plans are simple for this dungeon. Get in, get the fire arrows and get out. We just need to grab this small key which leads us to the mini boss, Wizrobe. After nailing one of the best drifts of my life. Can we nail it? Oh yeah, we can! We storm straight into Wizrobe's room, take them down and stand in the perfect spot to instant grab the chest. So far we're on a flawless run and onto our final task for the opponent arc. Gunning straight for the powder keg Goron and melting the ice blocking the path, the test can begin. However, our first hiccup of the run finally showed its head, and this happened. Uh, this? Why did it drop? What? <laughs> For some reason, crossing the bridge made me drop the keg to which the wolfos ran full speed at, causing it to explode. I have no clue what happened here at all, and if anyone can enlighten me, I'd appreciate it. After a minor setback, we rush straight for another keg and free the Goron Raceway, allowing us to get a keg of our own. After warping back to Milk Road and blowing up the boulder, we dash straight to Ramani and finally learn Epona's song. So much faster than last time. I mean, well, I had two minutes last time. I had two minutes. And it's what? It's, it's what time right now? About to hit 530. Plenty of time! Now that all of this is done, this is when everything in this run gets really intense. Remember earlier I said I had two tasks to complete before 6pm. Getting opponent's song and getting Cafe's mask. Cafe's mask is luckily time locked till 8pm. However, we need to get the mask ASAP to set up the next part of the Cafe and Andrew side quest. But we also have a few more time locked items we need to get. First, the Song of Storms which can only be learnt on night 1. And then the Giant's Wallet, which you can only get by completing the Ocean Spider House on day one. More on that soon. Warping back straight to Clock Town, we burst straight into the Mayor's office and talk to Mama, who grants us the Cafe's Mask. Heading straight to Andrew, we set up the Midnight Meet to progress the next stage of the quest. With nothing to do, it's time to get our final transformation mask, the Zora Mask. After watching Mikhail literally shredding it to death, we now have our final transformation mask, after a quick detour to grab the area's owl statue, we dash straight to the pirate's fortress. Now, here I do a whiff, and just miss a free ride on a pirate's boat, and end up getting caught. But then, we head to the fortress, and firing some well-placed shots, we climb the ladder leading inside. After setting loose the hornet, we've cleared the room and can get the hookshot, an item I will be putting to use immediately. But before we leave, we grab the Zora Egg to save some time later on. With the hookshot in hand, we can now clean out the ocean spider house. Fortunately, every time you pick up a stray fairy or skull token, the timer pauses whilst the dialogue box is up, meaning we can keep chaining tokens to save time. After collecting all 30 tokens, the spider house is complete. But here's one more trick. 
To save the maximum amount of time, take a death so the game warps you right back to the start. Since we already have all 30 tokens, the wallet guy is now here and waiting for us. We only have three more time-specific activities to round this day off. Get the Song of Storms, meet Andrew, and stop them to help Romani. Warping back into Clock Town, it's time to do a quick shopping trip, but not before grabbing the Bremen Mask from Guru Guru. As I was heading to the shop, I realized I didn't actually drop off the Zora egg yet. So we do a quick return trip to Great Bay and drop off the egg to free our bottle for Red Potion, which we will use shortly. Next, we collect a Stray Fairy again, which will return to the fountain momentarily. Since we already know the Bomber's Code, it's actually possible to get the Bomber's Notebook without doing a minigame again. All you need to do is give the code to the guard and come back out. Jim will then greet you and give you the Bomber's Notebook. After that, we make a quick dash back to the Observatory for the Moon's Tear, which we'll use to trade for the Deed later. The clock has finally struck midnight, meaning we can do the next step of the Cafe Andrew quest, which gets us the letter to Cafe. After passing by Gram Gram, who we have to leave to her fate, we hand in the Stray Fairy, which gets us the Great Fairy Mask. We now have two more time-sensitive events for the first night, getting the Song of Storms and stopping them from attacking the ranch. First, we use the red potion we bought to get the stone mask from Shiro, and then it's off to the graveyard to face off against Captain Kita for the captain's mask. After one slip-up due to being cursed by a bubble, Kita is down and the mask is ours. Using our newfound mask to order the undead around, we make our way to this iron knuckle. Using a mixture of bomb chews and bombs to keep our distance and a few crouch stabs, the iron knuckle is down and the song of storms is ours. Now for the final time-sensitive event to round off the day. After quickly handing in the letter to the cafe in Clock Town, we use the Milk Road Owl statue. It's time to stop them and keep Romani's mental state intact. The defense is fairly simple. Shoot the aliens that approach the barn. Here's a life hack. The dog will actually bark towards the closest alien to the barn. The doggo. Finally, the clock has struck 5.15 a.m., stopping their assault. The ranch is saved and Romani rewards us with a bottle. All that is left to do to round off this day is to hand in the sword to get it forged to the Razor Sword, heal Kamara's soul to get his mask, which is used to teach his dance to get a heart piece, and hand in the Moon's Tear to get the Land Deed. To kick off day two, I decided to wait outside the Cuckoo Shack, playing a little tune to myself until the clock strikes 6 a.m. Once they open up shop and we can get in, we amass an army of loyal chick followers with the Bremen Mask to get the Bonnie Hood, our means to make Link much faster. Next is opponent's time to shine as we challenge the Golden Bros to a race. To get the Garrus Mask, we'll need to enter Akana. Since it's the second day, I can collect my newly improved sword, the Razor Sword. This sword has a downside. After 100 hits, it will degrade back to our original sword. So the goal for now is to try to use the sword as little as possible. Now, it's time. It's dungeon clearing time. Woodfall Temple first. We face off with this mini boss for the boss key. We trap a Dola in a perfect stun lock like the scrub he is. Then he's down and the heart container remains an oath to order our ours. With the boss down, we can now return the Deku Princess back to the palace and save the monkey. It's a happy ending. Now for the beans. Since we're returning the princess back to the palace, you leave Woodfall Temple facing the palace already. After dropping her off and almost getting caught in the gardens, Oh, baby! We collect our beans, which we'll need later on. Let's him back to Snowhead Temple. It's time to face off a goat. Now, this time, I'm not collecting the stray fairies with double magic. We'll discuss why later. We take down Whist Rope for the boss key, and it's goat time, baby. And here's the quick kill method. Fire off a barrage of arrows at goats from a distance to take him down much faster than the whole roller derby thing. With only 20 minutes of in-game time used and a flawless quick kill, Go is dead and a second remains are ours. With Go out of the picture, spring has finally arrived in the mountains, which means it's time to do the best activity in an apocalyptic scenario, Go Racing. We need to do the Goron race in order to get the bottle of gold dust. After one of the most nerve-wrecking races I've had in Majora's Mask. No! Oh, wait, wait, did we get it? Did we get it? Did we get it? Did we get it? I don't know if I got first. Yes! A photo finish gets us the bottle of gold dust. Now, since our goal is to complete the entire Romani and Ranch side quest, I decided to use up a bit of time to go to the Swamp Spider House to get the Mask of Truth. Why the mask? You can use it to find out which dog in the doggy racetrack has the better chance of winning. After blitzing through the Spider House, the mask is ours. Lastly, to round up the swamp for this cycle, 
We trade the deed for the swamp deed, netting us another piece of heart. The clock has finally gone past 2.30pm, meaning Cafe is about to get the letter we sent. After Cafe takes an age to go collect his mail, we break into the storeroom waiting for him. Impatiently waiting almost an hour and a half, he finally gives us the pendant. Rushing back to Andrew, we give her the pendant, which makes us stay in the inn. With a little bit of time spare, I decide to go into the treasure chest shop to get the heart piece in there and to grab the one located conveniently in this tree. Now it's time to finish off the ranch for good. Heading over to the doggy racetrack, we use our mask of truth to find the gold dog saying rough, meaning it's most likely to win. After some motivational speech moment, push the other dog to the side. You are the alpha dog. You've got the dog inside you. Come on. The gold dog places first, which gets us another piece of heart. The clock has now struck 6 p.m. for night two, meaning we can go on a ride along with Kremia. After getting jumped by the Golden Bros and making them into a pin cushion, Kremia rewards us with the Romani mask. Next, it's time to go racing again. After landing back into Great Bay and challenging the beavers to a race twice, since it's all losers, they give us another empty bottle. And now we can collect all the Zora eggs, only three of which remain in both Pirate's Fortress and Pinnacle Rock. Time for a very quick detour made to Clock Town to grab our keg and other supplies that we'll use later on. Back in Great Bay, it's time to put our bottles to use. After grabbing the eggs in Pinnacle Rock and Pirate's Fortress, saving all the Zora eggs teaches us the next song we'll need to progress. The New Wave Bossa Nova. With this, our next destination is Great Bay Temple. Now remember earlier how I said we weren't getting double magic? Well, that's because of the Romani mask. Since it's now past 10 p.m., we can now get into the milk bar and purchase something much stronger than double magic. Chateau Romani. This drink grants us infinite magic for the rest of the cycle, meaning I can spare magic moves to my heart's content. And since we're already in the milk bar, I decide to grab the circus leader's mask, the saddest mask you'll ever see. Lastly, another bottle of milk was bought for the well later on. Storming right back to Sora's Cape, we summon the giant turtle to get to our third dungeon. The Great Bay Temple. The routing here has been slightly changed since the last video to avoid the long jump. First, we head on back to the boss key room to grab the small key located below the water. This key is then used to face off the dungeon's first mini boss. After taking it down with fire arrows and mineral sword slashes, we get ourselves the ice arrows. These are going to be used in a way you might have not seen before. After activating some of the turn keys to allow the water to flow, it was time we head back to the boss key room. You see, in the last video, I unknowingly performed what was known as a glitch in this temple, the long jump. I wasn't aware it was considered a glitch, I just considered it as an exploit. But, I'm happy to toss it out this time and do it legit. This time, we're getting that boss key early, without using long jumps at all. We head on back into the boss key room and fire an ice arrow into the water. This creates a platform. If you equip the Zora's mask and just simply roll off it, Zora Link grabs the ledge and the boss key is ours. Once again, super early and without the use of any glitches. The clock has struck past 5.15am on night 2. Time is seriously running out. Next, we need to make a quick detour back to the mountain village since it's time to hand in our sword to get it forged for the final time. Handing in the sword, I decided to return straight back to Great Bay, now swordless. After activating all the turn keys, it was time to face off with Gyorg. However, luckily for us, since we have Shadow Romani's effects on, we can spam magic infinitely and can use Gyorg's quick kill method. If you snipe Gyorg as it's lunging towards you and use Zora Link's magic move, aiming around its gills, this would then stunlock the boss, leading to a very easy kill. And with that, Gyog is down and the remains are ours. Only one final dungeon remains, Stone Tower Temple. But before anything, it's finally time to collect something we've waited patiently for three days. The Gilded Sword. Link's sword is now fully upgraded, all done within our main cycle. It's time to stock up on supplies and then head on over to Akana. Gunning straight towards Sharp, we played a song of storms, which for some reason melts the Gibdos away. I have no idea what's going on here. Anyways, the Gibdos are now gone. Sharp is now sane again, but dies twice, and it's off to Pamela's house to encounter some more nightmare fuel. After performing an exorcism, we now have the Gibdo mask. This is a kid's game, man. What the hell is going on here? With our newfound Gibdo mask, we can now communicate with the Gibdos down beneath the well. After giving these Gibdos their beans and Deku nuts, it's time to face off the giant Poe, which will be needed to progress further. 
However, here is when an issue occurred. Remember when I was in the shop? Like, literally a, a minute ago? I forgot to get one thing to progress further in the well. A fish. I was supposed to have bottled one up there. Luckily for us, this isn't too bad of a setback. A quick trip back to the shop again to get our fish. We offer its life to this gift though, which then lets us further into the well until we finally reach our reward for this labyrinth, the Mirror Shield. A means to complete the castle and stone tower temple. After a long climb, we reach the surface and stand just outside the ancient castle of Akana. After one heart attack later, if I miss this, I'm gonna just... Oh, why you're the best! And getting saved by Agoe, smacking me back onto the roof. All we need to do here is explode a powder keg on the roof to expose sunlight into the castle and face off with the king of the castle, Egos. With the guards and Egos down, we learn creepy past of the song, which will allow us to climb the stone tower. The clock has struck 1 p.m. on day three. 15 hours remain before the moon falls. We have two more time-sensitive events coming up. Meeting the curiosity shop owner, and of course, meeting Cafe outside Sakon's hideout. We now need to execute everything near flawlessly to even have a chance to pull this off. To climb the tower quickly, we utilize using only one transformation mask and Elegy of Emptiness to get the blocks in position where we can just simply hookshot over to the next location. Repeating this a few times, we have now reached the top of the tower. From here, we call over one block from the temple entrance and play Elegy of Emptiness again, which sips us straight to the entrance. This is it, the final dungeon, Stone Tower Temple. And what's perfect for us? Stone Tower Temple is insanely fast to beat if you know what you're doing. All we need to do is get the light arrows, which are guarded by the dungeon's mini boss. After getting a few small keys and some dungeon clearing later, we arrive outside the Garo Master's Chamber. Using our new freshly crafted gilded sword, we cut through the master like a hot knife through butter, and we are rewarded with the light arrows. Our last key item needed for this cycle. We now need to leave the dungeon and flip it on its head to tackle the inverted side. But the clock is nearing 4pm. We need to make a detour back to Clock Town to meet the curiosity shop owner who is waiting for us. After a quick chat, we're given a Keaton mask and the express mail to Mama. Mail will turn in later. Next, we head straight back to Stone Tower to start the inverted side. Now, this side is special as we can save an absolute ton of time here. You see, normally you'd progress through, solve some puzzles, fight Wizard again for, I don't know, I lost count at this point, and end up next to this Igor. What if I were to tell you that you don't need to do almost any of that? Let me show you. First, we progress normal till we get to this hallway with the Dexy hand. If we take it out using a bomb, then face this wall at an angle as Zora Link, do a little side hop into a jump attack, and there you go. We're already on the lower section, just outside the mini boss room. Now down below, you can snipe Igor, who is above us. With some of the best shots I've ever hit, Igor is already down and the giant's mask chest has been spawned. After going through the door behind us and facing off with Gomez and putting the gilded sword to work, we now have the boss key. But that giant's mask chest that spawned, you can actually hook onto it from down below. If you stand in this corner, you can just see the edge of the chest. With a well-placed hook shot, we're already just outside the boss room, and the giant's mask is ours. However, we don't have time to fight Twin Mold right now. It's time for the longest quest of the game, which takes up to six hours of in-game time. Time to help Cafe get the sun mask back from Sakon's hideout. A quick whoop later, we're now outside waiting with Cafe. After trying to tell Cafe that there is a button in front of him, Alright, Cafe, just, just be careful, right? There's a button there. It, you can clearly see it, and it's a blue button, and it has quite literally Majora's Mask on it. Uh, just just keep aware of that button right in front of you, alright? Just keep keep an eye on it. I know it's a sun mask, man, but uh, oh my god, Cafe, what have you done? And watching him almost ruin this plan, we quickly take down some enemies and solve some block puzzles, and Cafe is rewarded with the Sun Mask. Feels weird someone else getting an item in a Zelda game. Anyways, this is it. The final countdown has begun. Six hours remain until the moon crashes into Termina. We are so close to our goal now. Bolting straight back into the inverted temple, we can luckily use the hookshot again to hook onto the giant's mask chest, which leads us to the boss door. Now time to face off with Twin Mold. 
after landing some well-placed light arrow shots and turning into Big Boy Link, the twins are down, and with that, every dungeon in the game is now complete with 4 hours and 38 minutes spare. But no rest for us yet. With the precious time we have left, we head back to Clock Town and enter the milk bar to give Mama the express letter, netting us our fifth bottle out of six total. Time dwindling away, a quick trip is made to the curiosity shop to buy the big bomb bag and to sell our extra Chateau Romani, after which we'll deposit our new funds into the bank. Lastly, our final task before meeting Cafe is to hand in all the deeds to the scrubs around Termina to get access to their pieces of heart and to pay off the scrub in the hole to also get their piece of heart. Now with all that behind us, all that is left to do is wait for Cafe to arrive and we're rewarded with our ultimate goal of this cycle, the couple's mask. To recap, we managed to get a pony before 6pm, reach Mama before 6pm to get the cafe's mask, stop them from invading the ranch, and help Romani and her sister upgrade our sword to its max potential, clear all four dungeons, clear both spider houses, hand in all the deeds, gather as many masks as we can, and finally, the Cafe Andrew quest. We're now only five masks away from getting the Fierce Deity Mask. And with that, we can now fight Majora already. However, this isn't a one cycle run. This is a 100% in the least amount of cycles run. It's time to reset time and return to day one. Honestly, all the hard stuff is already done. All that's left to do is a mask cleanup to collect the remaining masks, upgrades, and heart pieces. So I think it's time to cue the black bars, get the music going, and start this collect-a-thon montage. Remember Gram Gram here. She's uh she's gonna cause a problem in a moment.
Now, I told you a moment ago to remember the old lady from the bomb shop. There's a special reason for that. It turns out that both the Cafe Andrew quest and getting the Blast Mask and All Night Mask are both tied to her. If she gets mugged twice, we can complete the Cafe Andrew quest and get the Bottle and the Postman's Hat. If we save her, we get to the Blast Mask and the All Night Mask. The All Night Mask is needed to listen to the other Gram Gram stories on day 1 or 2 to get the two heart pieces. I'm sure you've seen the problem here. You can only obtain the All Night Mask on Night 3 if she has been saved, and we need this mask in the next cycle to listen to other Gram Gram Snooze Fest stories. So she needs to both get mugged and get saved to progress and get items. Obviously, both can't happen, so we basically have to burn a cycle for this, making it impossible to free cycle this run. After having to painfully say goodbye to the third cycle, there are only three more heart pieces to collect as well as one final mask. Since we're almost at the end, let's finish this run off with a bang and go for the true happy ending. Starting off, we listen to other Gram Gram's first story to collect one heart piece, followed by taking down all four bosses one more time to purify the land of Termina. Next, it's time to make sure the wedding goes through by helping Cafe and Andrew one more time. And of course, saving Romani and the ranch again by stopping them once and for all. After listening to other Gram Gram's second story, all her heart pieces have now been collected. One heart piece and mask remain. Grabbing the priority mail one more time, we set off to Akana and meet Cafe and collect the sun mask. Bolting straight back to Clocktown and busting down the post office door, we give the postman the priority mail and grant him his freedom to flee, to which he gives us the final mask needed, the postman's hat. With this, we talk to the post box and receive the final heart piece of Termina. And with that, we have now collected all heart pieces, all upgrades, and of course, all masks of Termina. Only four heart pieces remain, all of which are located on the moon, as well as our ultimate prize. There it is. All 20 heart containers. After trading in all our masks, we are rewarded with the ultimate power. The Fierce Deity Mask. This mask honestly makes the Majora fight a complete joke, but we worked hard for this. I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. And there it is. The minimal amount of cycles it takes to 100% Majora's Mask is 4 cycles. Or 3 cycles if you don't include the Deku cycle, since everything done on that cycle could have easily been accomplished on one of the main cycles. Let me know what you think. Do you think the Deku cycle counts as a main cycle? Or simply just a tutorial cycle? Thank you so much for watching. Shoutouts to my patrons, And as always, I'll catch you in the next video.